How's everyone doing? Can y'all hear me? Hello, hello. I've lost the chat. Oh, no. Testing, testing. How are we doing, guys and girls? A lot of people in the chat. That's great to see. Ashley, Jen, Bigfoot Woodcraft. Hello. Hey, if someone can just let me know in the chat that you guys can hear me. That way, if there's an issue, I can start working on it. Awesome. Excellent. We got a couple more minutes still before we officially begin. Uh, so we'll just let others join in and so forth. So I hope everyone's day is going well. There's been some other great videos to watch and more coming uh, to see as well. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, everyone. How your guys' week's been going? Put my dirty safety glasses on. And I know that I'm a, a cool uh, YouTube, Instagram, social media guy because I got the two rings now in my eyes. That makes me cool. So. I got a little nervous uh, earlier this week because uh, I couldn't find the little attachment that uh, connects my phone to my tripod. Um, and I searched high and low, and of course, I can't find it. So the shop gnomes must have it somewhere, uh, those shop gnomes. So I uh, went out and got a new tripod. And uh, hey, Franco. And uh, got a new setup, and uh, we're off and running. So unboxed it here about 30 minutes ago. I've got my uh, cool Franco hat, or is it a Steve hat? I, I don't know. Do I look like Steve from Moonshine Metalworks? <laughs> All right, so we're four minutes in. So hopefully everyone who wants to be here is, is here, uh, or will be joining us shortly. So my name is Tim. Cunningham, I am the Urban Forge, and today we're going to be working on, <laughs> I love the comments guys, uh, making vessels because we got a lot of wood turners uh, on, on today and, and, and doing various things. In the past we've made flowers uh, and, and various other things, so today I thought I'd throw in my hat to, uh, to make a, a, a vessel, a bowl of some kind, so I was practicing that earlier this week and uh, made this little bowl with some creases in here. So, I'll show you that, right? The back. And then I took a kind of squarish rectangular piece and also made a bowl, added some texture in there. This cut that you see here uh, was already in there. Somebody did some plasma cutting of some kind to this scrap piece of metal that I had. And uh, I just left it in there. I thought it looked great. 
And uh, being a Pinterest type, uh, somebody at some point had forged a bowl with these little curls on the side. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I got to give that a shot. And uh, now that I've done it, I don't really care for it. It doesn't do anything for me. It's neat, but I don't think it adds overall to anything. So these bowls are great. You can put your rings in them. You can put your uh, jewelry in it. You can put your wallet. Um, all kinds of great things will fit inside this uh, pocket change, uh, belly button lint, uh, all sorts of stuff uh, that you can fit inside these. So today, I, I, I really like this, but uh, what I don't like is that it's small. I want it bigger. And I just didn't have any large round uh, circular bits of metal. So instead we're gonna keep with this rectangle slash square shape. So here is our blank. Here we go. This is what we're starting with. It is uh, even-ish um, for the most part. So we're gonna heat this up in the forge and we're gonna begin forging. Uh, so I've got my forge over here behind me. I'll get out of the way so you guys can see it. Yeah, now typically my forge is facing the other direction. Uh, usually it's, it, it's not this side, but uh, the opening in the forge is only so big. But one of the nice things about uh, this style of forge that I have for Majestic Forge is that it has an opening on the side so that when I'm working larger pieces, I can fit them in there. Um, it's a two burner gas forge, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, it runs off of propane and today I just have a standard like 20 pound propane tank like you would find off your grill, right, for, for gas grilling. Uh, it's got a pretty hefty regulator on it. Um, the propane comes down through here, ignites inside this box, and that's where all the heat is. Um, and then these larger openings, air gets sucked down into, it allows me to reach the temperatures that I need to be forging, to be blacksmithing um, in this setup. This is great. Um, I love these gas forges. I live in the city. Um, so like up the street, there's an abandoned mall. Um, and so I don't use coal or I don't use Coke. Um, I use a gas forge because I have neighbors and I want them to like me. Um, so I, I use gas. I don't have, you know, billowing bits of, of coal smoke going across the neighborhood to upset the neighbors. So, so this is what we're doing. This is what we're working on. Uh, I already preheated the forge a little bit to uh, get things rolling. So I'm going to just drop this. Uh, I'm going to light it and then I'm going to open this up and we're going to get started here. So you're going to hear a, a whooshing sound. divots in there. That's what I did with 
this bowl here. So you can see that texture in there. And at the end of the forging, um, when I was done, I just took a wire wheel and just wire wheeled uh, the snot out of this um, to, to kind of brighten that up some. Uh, so that's one option. Another option is, you know, doing these folds and just let that be your texture, those, those lines in there. Uh, but today, I think instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little cross paint here. I'm going to use the cross paint section. So we're going to get a texture um, and it kind of like lines, a bunch of layered lines. So if you've seen some of my other uh, lives where we made the flowers and stuff, it's a similar texture to that, except we're just going to do it on a sheet metal. Uh, so that's what we're, we're, we're doing. We got the metal heating up in there. A uh, couple other things real quick. So because I just have the one camera and the one tripod, um, I'm not cool enough to have like a multi-camera system. Um, I'm going to be moving the uh, camera around a little bit, the phone around. Uh, so there's going to be some times where things get a little jostly and, and so forth. So I will warn you when that happens so that you can see what's going on. Um, so if you need to look away from the screen, you can totally do that. So we're going to uh, let that heat up, and we're going to get started here. So my week's been uh, pretty busy. I've been working on some custom orders. Got a flower wreath that I've been working on. Uh, I made a pipe stand for uh, pipe tobacco smokers. Uh, that's been pretty fun to do. So I'll show you that real quick. It's not part of the demo, but part of the part of the fun. So you said you're pipe in there. It looks all happy and hunky dory. So those are some of the things that I've been doing. And then the other thing is that it is the end of fall here in northeastern Ohio where I'm at. Um, and it's a balmy 42 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, all the leaves have fallen down and I've been raking leaves like nobody's business of blowing leaves with the leaf blower. I've got a huge yard with, with lots of trees and so you might see some leaves that are invading my shop i've been battling that all week and then we got snow uh <laughs> so now they're buried in the snow all right looks like we're reaching the uh, temperature in there i'm going to move that around a little bit and you can see that jet of flame hitting that sheet metal so we're getting a nice color in there so i'm going to sit that back down so I've got my cross paint already. I'm going to move the camera down so that you can see what it is that I am up to. So here we go, a little jostling, a little movement. cold to work, it is still 
fairly warm. Uh, it's not quite warm enough to, to char that. But it's hot enough that I don't want to touch it. So we'll stick it back in our gorge. Get it hot again and start working once more. It being a cooler day, the anvil isn't very warm, so a lot of the heat also gets sucked out through the anvil. The anvil acts as like a giant heat sink. So uh, I'm working against that and uh, just the outside temperature in general. creating a little bit of a, a natural dish. So you'll see me towards the end um, as I'm starting to lose heat to, to lay it flat on the backside and hammer it straight again. So that's what's going on. So we get some very pretty patterns going on in there. Flip it around, get it hot and do the other side. Thank you. 
take a look here, you can see where I have, have been and where the next set of hammer blows are going. You can see I'm already starting to expand where it is my various forms for dishing or raising, uh, depending on your terminology. So I have this large cast piece of steel that's going to sit in vice, and it has a bit of a radius in it. And this is what we're going to start helping us to dish and get that shape. So if we take one of our previously formed dishes, what allows me to start that dishing process in that shape. But I'm not cutting into the material, I'm just allowing the material to take shape of what it is that I'm hammering in. Good, good, excellent. 
I'm not supposed to see all that. All right, so here is our cupping tool. It's in a large lake vise, and I'm going to use cross peen to start the dishing. I'm going to start on the edges and start to cut back. So we're going to get our bowl. So uh, the next heat, 
fold over those those corners and get them to, to the place that I want them now before my my bowl becomes too too big. Right? And I'm gonna pull out a special pair of pliers called scrolling scrolling tongs. So for any of you that do like wire jewelry or something like that, these are just a pair of long tongs that holds onto the, the metal and they're rounded to allow me to get an even radius all the way across there. I made these using uh, a tong kit from Ken's Custom Iron Works. Uh, he sells blanks that allow uh, for faster work. I'm not the best tong maker. Uh, blacksmiths, typically we make our own tools a lot of the times and there's lots of great tools that I have made or tools that I have purchased and augmented to my purposes uh, to do various things. Here's a cool twist. This is called Rubik's Cube Twist. And this is my twisting wrench. So when I twist the metal, uh, that's, what I, that's what I use. So this just allows me to get a nice even curl all the way around. So take care of those corners. But like this, mostly the bigger tools, uh, I have a nice combination of made tools and we're going to go to a swage block. So the swage block is a large piece of steel that has various different uh, forms and shapes in it. So uh, it's going to have things like a spoon shape and various round dies and half rounds and uh, squares or V's cut into it. All sorts of cool stuff. I use this swage block for all sorts of things. Uh, when forging, but a lot of times it's it's truly just for the leaves or the leaves, the flowers that I make. So we're going to move in just a second. I'm going to bend that corner over onto itself, and then we'll go to that swing. All right. Remembering what I said, we folded this one over. We want to do opposite to the opposite corner we're going to fold it in so grab a hold of it start curling it in and watch now that little bit of time that it took me to grab a hold of my tools and have it ready i've lost the heat to get it to do what i want oh no so So, 
ha, we still got the job done. Let's fold it in. So we have our fold it in, fold it out, round it off over here. Okay. Next, we're gonna jump over here to the swage one. I'll show you that in just a second here on that piece. So I'm gonna move the camera again. So take a look away if you need to. Here we go. Adjust the camera. Everybody cringes. So that's a nice shot of what we're doing right there. So here's our swage block. So I have a deeper rounding swage right here. Here is some of those radiuses I was talking about, different round shapes I have. On the back side, I have two spoon swages and different radius rounds. And then I believe these little dots are for riveting and rivets. I got this off of uh, New Holland um, Anvils, and uh, they've been casting these up in Michigan. They're great, uh, great, great tools to have um, and economically priced. Um, so like if you go to a hammer in or online to look to buy something like this, um, typically they're, they're bigger, but you're looking at 500 or, or more dollars. Uh, whereas the new Holland ones are smaller um, and they're, they're more economically priced. Uh, swage blocks also will have, instead of round dies and, and so forth in the middle, they'll have different squares or rectangles for punching and drifting. So if you're watching guys and girls on, on YouTube who are making hammers or axes, you'll see them use a swage block that instead has holes instead of these different radiuses in there. Instead of the cross pin, I'm going to go to my to a ball pin to help this take the shape inside much deeper way. Much more of a radius shape. One half. starting to get tricky as to where to hold it. There we go. Look at that. Look how much deeper we've gone there. down here and take a look. All right, we got Brian joining us. Excellent. How's it going, Brian? So you know, typically, a lot of uh, people will start to, uh, at this point, want to use uh, a wooden mallet. And uh, I don't have a great big wooden mallet. I have this little tiny thing. That uh, I found in a uh, part of a scrap bin that uh, I, I bought a bunch of stuff out of, some horseshoes and things. So I've been using this. It's pretty lightweight, but it still gets the job done. Um, so I'm going to start using it. You'll see some smoke and things. I have a nice, uh, nice wooden mallet. Instead, I've got this weak, <laughs> weak wooden mallet, 
And what this wood mallet does is just keeps me from marring up and losing that texture. That ball team, uh, I'll get some, some little hammer strikes from it. smoky smell. shake that we want. We're going to come back over here to the anvil and uh, do some final If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm not ignoring, I'm just trying to do the best I can to show you guys what's happening with the process. These bolts are amazing. You can do any number of things with them. They're great for all sorts of things. Like I said before, you can take and you can fold it in onto itself and get some cool lines in there. This will hold rings or chains. It'll hold your soap, whatever it is that you, you want to, it's kind of a catch-all in there. Um, but they're also just beautiful forms to just have. I mean, look at this. Beautiful color, all kinds of hues of blues and golds and blacks in there. Amazing, amazing stuff that you can do. 
with dishing. And then when you start getting into things like copper and bronze and brass, um, it's absolutely stunning what it is that you can do with this shape. So here we go. We're going to fold this. Uh, think, 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 think. Make sure I go the direction. Get the effect that I want to have. The piece of metal is supported in such a way that it will bend.
hobby, a new passion, a new craft. It's so much fun. We have a great time. I teach a lot of blacksmithing classes uh, and show people how to forge. We're getting ready to go into making Christmas ornaments for the Christmas season. If you're in Northeastern Ohio, come check me out. Love to have you in my class. We're having a great time. I'm gonna move the camera so that you can see me. Come on, come on, come on. The last thing I'm gonna do with this bowl here, is I'm gonna heat it up one more time, a little bit, and then we're gonna cool it off. See what there is to see. But again, if you're interested in trying this, oh man, it's a lot of fun. It's a great time. Find an organization. Find your local blacksmith. See if he'll give you a go. It's a blast. Also, I'd be amiss if I didn't mention that there's another great life show happening after me. Um, a wonderful wood turner, and I have totally forgotten her name. I'm so sorry. Um, but go to the link. Go to the description uh, in, in this uh, video. You'll see the link below my name click on that continue to enjoy this this day of, of virtual crafting buy a t-shirt uh, I wasn't able to pick mine up yet I'm gonna order one uh, here soon for a virtual craft show it's benefiting a wonderful family who uh, lost their loved one so please support them help them out uh, here we go like I said just a little more we'll pull this off and we'll be off camera in just a second you might hear here we go. Got this wonderful bowl. And I'm going to be making some more of these and uh, get some different shapes as well, some round shapes. And this is still pretty warm. You can see the smoke coming off of that. I didn't completely cool it off as that water is evaporating off of there. That's all evaporation. Pretty great. I want to thank you guys so much for coming. If you guys have any questions, we're going to stay on here for a little bit longer for question and answer time. Please, um, if you've got questions, let me know. Thank you again. I love doing these. You guys are awesome. And I uh, hope to see you in two months uh, and maybe uh, have some other great things to do. So. And uh, if you're interested in purchasing any of the bowls, I don't usually mention this, but uh, I've got stuff for sale. Uh, DM me, get a hold of me if you're interested in purchasing something. Um, I'll be happy to help you out. If you're overseas um, in England or Europe, um, there's an additional cost, and I don't, I can't promise like when you're going to get it because the stuff and things like it's impossible to know when that stuff's arriving. It seems, especially in today's environment. Backed up orders. So, last look at our our dish, and come find me on uh, Instagram and Facebook, The Urban Forge, and you can see the, see it all polished up and uh, what the finished product looks like. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you around. Bye.